the general duty of the mind is to keep the soul unto a constant, holy consideration of God and His grace. This evidently lies at the springhead of gospel obedience. The way whereby sin draws off the mind from this part of its duty is open and known sufficiently, though not sufficiently watched against. Now, this the scripture everywhere declares to be the filling of the minds of men with earthly things. This it places in direct opposition unto that heavenly frame of the mind, which is the spring of gospel obedience. Quote, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Unquote. Or set your minds, Colossians 3.2. As if he had said, quote, On both together you cannot be set or fixed, so as principally and chiefly to mind them both. Unquote. And the affections to the one and the other, proceeding from these different principles of minding the one and the other, are opposed as directly inconsistent. Quote, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Unquote. 1 John 2.15 And actings in a course suitable unto these affections are proposed also as contrary. Quote, you cannot serve God and mammon. Unquote. Matthew 6.24 these are two different masters whom no man can serve at the same time to the satisfaction of both. Every inordinate minding, then, of earthly things is opposed unto that frame wherein our minds ought to be fixed on God and His grace in a course of gospel obedience. Several ways there are whereby the deceitfulness of sin draws off the mind in this particular. But the chief of them is by pressing these things on the mind under the notion of things lawful, and, it may be, necessary. So all those who excuse themselves in the parable from coming into the marriage feast of the gospel did it on account of their being engaged in their lawful callings, one about his farm, another his oxen, the means whereby he ploughed in this world. Luke fourteen sixteen through 24 by this plea were the minds of men drawn off from that frame of heavenliness which is required to our walking with God, and the rules of not loving the world, or using it as if we used it not, are hereby neglected. What wisdom, what watchfulness, what serious frequent trial and examination of ourselves is required to keep our hearts and minds in a heavenly frame in the use and pursuit of earthly things, is not my present business to declare. This is evident, that the engine whereby the deceit of sin draws off and turns aside the mind in this matter, is the pretense of the lawfulness of things about which it would have it exercise itself, against which very few are armed with sufficient diligence, wisdom, and skill.